This is Torah portion, Parshas of Yishlach. We have the fascinating story of Yaakov returning back to Eretz Yisrael, <coughs> and he sends messengers ahead to apologize to Esav. And he gets word that Esav is coming with 400 associates, 400 guerrillas, to kill him and his entire family. So we know the story. Es- Yaakov prepares for this encounter, and he encamps by by the river Mavar Yabuk. And uh, they camp there, but he can't sleep. In the middle of the night, he says, we can't stay here. And he acts like a ferryman. He crosses his entire family and all their sheep. And all those who are with him, they cross the entire river. He brings them back all, all across the river. And it says that he found himself alone. While he was alone, he, was, he left some small containers. He didn't want to waste them. And he was all alone. And while he was alone, in the middle of the night, he's attacked by this ish, this man, this shadowy man, who turns out to be the angel of Asa, and he's attacked their entire night. And the entire night, this this angel is trying to throw him to the ground, but he's not successful. And instead, he touches and dislocates his kaf yerech, the sciatic nerve. And, and Yaakov limps, but wasn't defeated. The Torah says, because of the fact that Yaakov was, was limping because of this incident, Therefore, the Jewish people do not eat the git hanasha, the sciatic nerve. And this is the reason why Jews do not eat the hindquarters, because the, the, the sciatic nerve runs through the hindquarters, and, and um, it's not kosher to eat. So what is this mysterious mitzvah, not eating the git hanasha, not eating the sciatic nerve? So the Sefer HaChinuch says, a fascinating thing, the Sefer HaChinuch says, this teaches us, reminds us, <coughs> that just as Yaakov, was attacked by this angel, the angel of Esau, uh, was protected, and Yaakov was 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 uh, victorious. So the Jewish people, this is a message for posterity. The Jewish people, we will be faced with savage enemies, people who want to kill us and destroy us throughout history, but they will not be victorious. They may hamstring us, but they will not be able to destroy us. And this gives us pitachon, confidence, and optimism for the future. That even though we, today. As yesterday, as in the past, we've we're facing enemies. We will we can look forward with hope and optimism. That's one lesson from Githanasha. A different idea. The Rashba says Githanasha is actually a, a form of a symbolic prayer that God, just as you protected Yaakov, please continue to protect us from our enemies. Um, but I want to share with you one approach from the Chizkuni. The Chizkuni says, "Why was Yaakov attacked? Because Vayevaser Yaakov Levado." Yaakov was left alone. Because he was left alone, and he felt alone, that's why he was attacked. Had he not been alone, he would have been safe. And the lesson is, we have to make sure, for all posterity, not to let a Jew feel alone. Not to let a Jew feel alone. So we take out the Githanasha to remember what happens when a Jew is left alone. What happens when a Jew feels alone. I want to share with you a remarkable story. Um, I recently read a biography of, of a great man named Rabbi Laser Geltaylor. <clears throat> Rabbi Geltaylor had a, a school a yeshiva in Williamsburg, and uh, he was the head of the yeshiva. And he was once, as many heads of institutions are wont to do, he had a, a fundraising dinner, a fundraising banquet with honorees at a very fancy hall called Terrace on the Park, which I've been to actually in New York. <clears throat> and then this, this, this fancy dinner honoring important people, all these guests were coming and he worked for months preparing for this important banquet. And it was a big fundraiser. And the dinner starts and all this, you know, everything looks beautiful with music, beautiful food, beautiful ambience, all these people are there and it, 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 start, it goes smoothly. Everyone's there except one person, Rabbi Gail Taylor, the head of the yeshiva, the one who ran this dinner, he's not there. And they start, and they, and they go on. They, they go on with all the proceed, proceedings. Rabbi gets the letters in here. Finally, an, an hour and a half late, comes in, comes in to the hall. He doesn't say a word. So later, he was asked by his father, Rabbi Lazer, you came late to your dinner. You worked for months in this dinner. How, did, how can you come late? He said, he says, Tati, I was driving to the dinner. And I saw a Jew on the highway. He was on the side of the highway, trying to change his tire. He was struggling to change his tire. How could I leave him alone? How can we feel? How can we let a Jew feel alone? How can we let a Jew be alone during trouble? 
That's why I'm late to my dinner. How can we let a Jew feel alone during times of trouble? Let's learn this lesson. Let's reach out to each other, care for each other, love each other, and make sure no Jew feels alone. Have a wonderful Shabbos.